This is not my cat. It's my stepson's cat, but he likes to hang around me. Hard to do work with a cat around. So I'm looking at this Digitus UPS today. This is playing up a little bit. It's stopped behaving. And now it's not working at all. Here you go, it's kind of, it wants the kind of half come on. It, you can barely see it on screen. But the display on this is really bad. It used to be backlit. And that's kind of failed. It's just gradually faded back. I think it used to be blue from memory. I can't remember exactly, I think it was blue. And it's just gradually faded back. And you can't see anything now. It's, I can see contrast on there. When it comes on, I can see the digits on there. But you probably can't see them on camera. You got those on now. And it's just turned on for the first time. So I've been trying it a few times. It says battery is 3%. You can kind of see it on there, can you? There you go, you can just about see it there. So yeah, I need to pull this apart and have a look. It's probably just a dead battery. Probably not a big deal. But I would also like to try and see them do something with display to make it so we can actually read it again. That'd be nice. Because this is a line interactive UPS, it does support the line frequency. So if, a, if you've got a brownout, you know, where the voltage drops in your main AC coming in, it will help support it and actually replace it and things like that. So, and because we've had lots of issues recently with that playing up, I think this was working quite hard to try and make it up and switching in and out a lot. And that's why the battery's suddenly just gone because well, it's getting old and it's had enough. So I think that's probably what's going on here. I think the battery's had it. Now if you work on these things, bear in mind, there could be high voltage in here floating around still. It's potentially there, especially if you've got one which is faulty. So the thing to do about that is to unplug the battery straight away and make that safe. Now I think the battery's probably the problem in this. Let's unplug that and try and get this one unplugged as well. There we go. So the battery disconnected. There could still be power in here, so just bear that in mind. There are some capacitors in here, but not really big. And while we're actually looking at this, we'll actually inspect the capacitors and see if they appear to be bad. No signs of bulging. They all look fine. They visually look okay, so I'm not even going to worry about those. So let's check this battery and see what the battery's actually doing. Alright. Stick one there. Stick one here. 10.8 volts, yeah that battery's knackered. Okay, I do actually have a battery. Let me just go and grab it. So I had this battery sitting around for a couple of years. I charged it up about probably four months ago. I gave it a top up charge. It's not good to leave this sitting around without charging up occasionally. So I don't know what condition it's in right now. So look, 12.8 volts, that's fine. So that should be fine. Um, we could check the ESR. Banggood, we're gonna send me a ESR meter. They're actually for doing battery testing. I already have one. But they were going to send me another one. That was like a month ago. Hasn't arrived yet. And also the rep I deal with at Banggood has resigned and been replaced by somebody else. So maybe in that transition they forgot to send it to me. Because it would have been nice to do testing like this would be perfect for that. For doing testing between the batteries to see what the resistances are using a review item. That would have been good because that's exactly what it's for. Anyway, never mind. Missed opportunity. Let's get my other one which I've had for a while. You can get these from AliExpress. I think it's actually in my videos. I've got a list of tools and stuff down there. This is the YR1030. So here I've got a resistance tester for batteries. So what we can actually do with this is hook this up to the terminals and test these batteries internal resistance. So this is a battery I've had sitting around for a couple of years. Now I have tested it a couple of years ago. 18 ohms. Now it's, I did recharge this about 3 or 4 months ago, something like that, and topped it up. Yeah, can't leave these sitting around too long. That's a brand new battery unused, and obviously this battery is failing. So we can actually test this battery with this unit. Now, in my video list down below in the description, I have a tools list, and I think this is in this, the YR1030. So if you see that on the list, if there's a link there for it, go follow it, because you can get one of these too. Useful tools. So let's just hook this up to it, turn this on, and we'll see what happens. Seventy nine ohms, right? So ten point eight volts as you already got with the multimeter. Seventy nine ohm internal resistance, which isn't great. Okay, so let's hook this up to the new battery, which the internal resistance is probably higher than I originally tested because it's been sitting around. But it's probably going to be a lot better than that. 
Now it's probably going to be more than 18 ohms, it's probably going to be a bit more than that because it's not fully charged. The internal system changes the charge levels as well. So what we've got now, 21 ohms. So when this is fully charged it's probably come down slightly more and so it was 18 ohms originally. It's still significantly better than the battery which is currently in this thing and the voltage is fine as you can see. Now let's get this battery out. This is an easier one to get out of. Sometimes you can see swelling on the batteries. But this one's quite good because it's got a, a strap that goes around the battery, so it actually makes it quite easy to get it out. There have been other ones I've worked on, and they've been a nightmare trying to get the batteries out. They're really badly designed. This one's easy. It's good, I like it. But there's been so much I've been a real nightmare. You've got to literally unbolt the transformer and all sorts of stuff to try and get the batteries out of them. This one is as easy as that. All right. And that one I measured 11.4 milliohm when I put it in. Unfortunately I didn't put a date on it. Sometimes they have a date stamped in them. Let's see what's underneath here. Maybe I can see it. Here we go. 2017. So this battery is 7 years old. So it's actually done alright. For a change. So I think this UPS actually handles batteries quite well. I think I've only replaced the batteries in this once. It's probably just that one time. That's not the original battery. It's one I put in it. So some UPSs tend to chew through batteries. They just overcharge them or undercharge them. I'm quite sure. I think usually overcharging is the issue. And it kills the batteries too quickly. Whereas this one seems to be about right. It seems to be handling it okay. So it's nice it's lasted that long. Anyway, let's put the other battery in. You don't see me do that. I'll probably just bolt it in. You can imagine what I'm doing, can't you? Well, let's reconnect the wiring. Now I've got the battery back in, and let's see what happens. Do the positive first, because it happens to be on this side of it. Do the negative. Obviously, when you do these, make sure the terminals are the same way around. Sometimes the batteries, the terminals are already. You can might find the positives on this side and negatives that side instead. Double check before you just shove the things on there. We'll just power up. Yep. 85% battery. That sounds about right actually. So we can see it on camera. We get it on camera. Yeah, you kind of see it. Yeah, 81% now, 80%. Yeah, well, it's because it needs charging up. That's fine, it's working. Now, I do want to look at this display, so I'm going to do something with the display. So we might have a look at that. So for the time being, let's pull the power back off again. So make sure the battery itself is working right in here. And let's see if we can get this off and see if we can find a way of improving the display. Could be interesting. There may be nothing we can do about it. But it might just be, you know, an LED sync on the side of it or something. And something that simple, we could swap it. i really got no idea what's in there. I've also got no idea how this attaches, but we'll find out. Probably made more sense to do this before I put the battery in, actually. Never mind. There's screws down there. Okay. See, I've got some J cars. And this is the Iris battery, which I got last time. Okay. So it got a plug on it. Yes, it does. Great. One plug. Where's the other plug? Yeah. Alright, let's see if we can get this out and see if we can do something with the display. I mean, I don't know if we can or not, but let's have a look. It may not be possible. It's got some bodges in here. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's an embedded LED. It's a shame. Must have been doing something with it though. So that's interesting little bodge, isn't it? What's going on here? So that track there is actually going around to the LED. Look at the state of it. There's a series resistor. It's bypassing series resistor. So that's been done to probably increase the brightness of the backlight by someone, not by me. This is, I think it's by me. If it was, that's an awful job. <laughs> I don't remember doing this, so I think I'm safe. But yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. But then, if it was me, I wouldn't have cut that track, right? If, it's, if I'd done this, if I'm just jumping a resistor, I wouldn't have cut that track. That's not something I would have done. So that's not me. Someone else has done this. That's weird. That must be a factory mod or something. And the other side of the D's also got a resistor in it. 
try and figure out the polarities and just maybe try and stick another diode on the side and see if I can get some kind of backlighting going on. I don't know, maybe. Right, so I just plugged it all back together again, powered it up. The screen is on, which you can maybe barely see. There's absolutely no light at all from this LED. There's nothing coming out of it. I'm measuring a voltage across it, but it's not lighting up at all. So I've got another LED here. Stick this across it, it lights up just fine. So what I'm thinking of doing is trying to bodge this LED in somehow to uh, make that shine into the backlight and hopefully have it work. I mean, the LED is measuring a voltage across it as a forward voltage, but it's not emitting any light. Just dead. So let's just measure this resistor, which has been jumpered out. 10 ohms. Let's put that back in the circuit, shall we? I don't see why that would be necessary to jump that out, but 10 ohms is going to help it, I think. I'm worried about over-voltaging. So I'll just wedge this LED on the side, which is kind of how it will end up sitting. I just want to see if it actually lights up the display or not. Because it might be good enough to just literally tack that on the side like that. So let's power it up. That's much better. I can see that clearly myself now. Even just like that. Um, and on camera you can kind of see it. If I take the LED away, it goes off. So it's definitely doing enough to probably do the job. Now if I were to put on, say, two LEDs instead, that's also an option. I could put like one down here and then put another one next to it, above it. Run two LEDs on it. That might be even better. Yeah. Putting two LEDs might be even better. So what voltage are you getting on here? Let's find that out. 4.2 like that, it's wedge the LED on it. Measure again. 3.2. Now I think this LED runs at 3 volts, so I could probably increase the resistance here actually, make it drop down slightly more and make it last longer. That's a 3 volt LED, so that's pushing it a little bit, it's pushing it quite hard. If I actually just put two LEDs on that voltage, because the voltage dropped through the resistors, that might actually be good enough. Because it's obviously going to double the current, and it will share it. Which means it will be easier on each one, and it will drop the voltage as well at the same time. So if I just put two LEDs side by side, we'll try that. So I'm just going to arrange these pins on this LED here to try and offset it to one side. And then I'll just mount one, and then I'll attach the other one on the other side. So basically the intention is to put one there. On one side, like that. Yeah, try and get in place. Try and get in place. I'll stick one there, and I'll stick one there. So I have two LEDs firing from the sides, and that'd be much better. So that'll drop the voltage down because it'll be increasing the current, and it'll be sharing the current across the two as well. So it should last a very long time like that. It should also be brighter. All right, let's try this out. See if it's going to work. There you go. You can see it on camera now. Does it still fit into the front panel? That's the question. Actually, I want to check the voltage. Now I've done that done. See the voltage again. Because that should have dropped down some more. Three volts, there we go. That's still a little bit higher than I'd like. I might put some more resistance in it. So I'm gonna put a resistor in series, uh, put that link in there to replace that wire which was jumping that resistor, there's a 10 ohm resistor. So I've taken that link back out again, I'm going to put a 100 ohm resistor in its place. And we'll see what this does. See what voltage you get now. I put a 100 ohm resistor in series. Two point eight volts. Look at that. Great. Happy with that. That's the sort of voltage I was wanting to get. Display is still visible to me and just about visible on camera. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go with that level. That will do just fine. Well, let's power this thing up and see what happens. So it's drawing 34 watts right now, which is probably just idle current and charging battery. 
and it's turned itself on. There we go. Perfect. That's what it's supposed to do. Now it says the battery is 100% but I know it's not true because I've got to charge it up yet. But it's working at least and we can now see the display. I can see it. The camera can see it. That's a huge improvement straight away. Happy with that. If I adjust the input voltage You can see the output is staying at 230 because it's a line interactive. And it changes windings on the transformer as well. So you can see it's actually making sure the voltage stays constant at 230 volt. See that? So this is what I like about this one because it, it keeps the output constant. So that's good. Anyway, that's working again. It can get back on the other side of the room there and uh, carry on doing its duty for another few years before the battery dies again, hopefully. So, videos down below to watch if you're interested in other repairs and stuff like that. Subscribe over here if you're not subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel and help me to buy things like new batteries for UPSs. Thanks a lot.